Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Like many American presidents in the last year of their first term, President Joe Biden delivered his State of the Union address with a key goal in mind, to convince the American people he deserves four more years. Tonight, we can proudly say the State of our Union is strong and getting stronger. He addressed voters' concerns about his age and mental acuity, turning it into an attack against former President Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee he's likely to face in the November election. The issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old our ideas. Hey, anger, revenge, retribution are the oldest of ideas. But you can't lead America with ancient ideas. While it's not technically a campaign speech, Biden had a clear message to voters. Trump is a dire threat to democracy. The president invoked the January 6, 2021 storming of the U.S. Capitol by Trump supporters seeking to overturn Biden's victory in the 2020 election. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6. I will not do that. As Israel's military campaign raged in Gaza, Biden announced a dramatic measure to deliver much-needed aid for Palestinians. Tonight, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. It's unclear whether the plan will be enough to appease progressive Democrats, Arab and Muslim Americans outraged by Biden's unyielding support of Israel. Hundreds protested outside while he spoke. Biden underscored Israel's right to self-defense against Hamas while calling for a temporary ceasefire and the release of hostages held by the militant group. And in a rare rebuke to Israel, he expressed frustration over the lack of aid and the 30,000 death toll in Gaza. For the leadership of Israel, I say this. Humanitarian assistance cannot be a secondary consideration or a bargaining chip. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority. As we look to the future, the only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. Biden's foreign policy goals have been overshadowed by House Republicans' obstruction of a Senate-approved $95 billion foreign aid package to help Ukraine in its fight against Russia. Biden urged them to pass the bill. My message to President Putin, who I've known for a long time, is simple. We will not walk away. Biden urged Congress to pass a bill on immigration and border security, a key issue for American voters. He laid the blame for the deadlock on Republicans and Trump, accusing them of exploiting the border as a political issue. We can fight about fixing the border or we can fix it. I'm ready to fix it. He vowed to protect the right to abortion and in vitro fertility treatment, a top concern for Democrats amid conservative states restricting access. Many of you in this chamber and my predecessor are promising to pass a national ban on reproductive freedom. My God, what freedom else would you take away? Biden also touted his policies, calling the American economy the envy of the world. He laid out a progressive economic agenda targeting corporate America and the wealthy. No billionaire should pay a lower federal tax rate than a teacher, a sanitation worker, or a nurse. Alabama Senator Katie Britt delivered the Republican response. President Biden just doesn't get it. He's out of touch. Under his administration, families are worse off. Our communities are less safe and our country is less secure. The data shows the economy has exceeded expectations, but inflation remains a major concern of voters, creating a potential weakness for Biden ahead of the election.